Welcome to the Hard Work Project, the football podcast show that looks at the lives of aspiring young footballers and the journey for them getting to the top. And today I'm your host, Semps, and my co-host, Josh, and we're joined and pleasure to be joined by Kayon and his father, Dwayne. Um, Kayon, how you doing? You okay? Yeah, I'm good, you? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. And Dwayne? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Good, good, good. Josh? Josh, guys, in the place. Happy days. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> so you wanted to introduce? Yeah, so um, just to start off with, I always like to um, say thank you, because I know that it's very, you've got a very busy schedule as a young player with school and training and stuff. So we always like to say thank you for coming in, taking the time out to come and talk to us. Um, we've got some guys that help make the show happen. So um, we've got some gifts from them. So Inspire Dynasty and Forever Young Couture. Um, they've given us a t shirt for you from Forever Young Couture. We've got a tracksuit, which you can get out later from Inspire Dynasty. Managed to get a flask for mum. Yeah, so you can have that. Dad, you've got a hard work project t shirt. Yeah, so thanks again for coming on. And um, yeah. Wicked, wicked. We give it to you actually, so I don't think I'm just. <laughs> just presenting it for show. <laughs> yeah, so there's that. Um, so as I'm saying now, so yes, okay, yeah, you're a very serious young guy. You know what I mean? Very, always got a very serious look on your face. So I created a little icebreaker to break the ice, get everybody relaxed and warmed in. So it's called the Who's Mo- Most Likely Game. So you've got a little paddle in front of you. So I'm going to ask you some questions and then you just say... Mum, dad, basically, with your use the paddle to answer. So, um, you ready? Yeah. All right. So the first one is, um, who has the better taste in music? You've got your paddles. Mum, use your paddle. <laughs> there. Right there on you. <laughs> Any argument from dad? <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's the better dancer? Mum. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> no um, argument again. <laughs> no, argument. no argument. All right. All right. Then. So, who, who's when you're at your matches? Who's the loudest on the touchline? Mom. Mom. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, who's most likely to be late? Dad. Dad. Yeah. <laughs> who's most likely to get a speeding ticket trying to get you to training on time? Dad. Dad. <laughs> who's the funniest? Who's the funnier? <laughs> tough don't one. look at your mom. <laughs> um, probably mom. Probably mom. Yeah. Okay. Mom. It seems like mom's winning right now. All right then. Actually, tell her that. Dad. 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 Yeah. yeah. That's funny. Okay. But dad's not putting up no arguments. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who has? Who has the best style? In what way? Like just fashion style. Oh. Swag. Yeah, mom. Mom, yeah. <laughs> Mom's mom, you're not intimidating. Mom, yeah, <laughs> yeah you give me <laughs> you give them looks over there now. Um, all right, who's the strictest parent? Mom. Mom, yeah. Mom's on you. Okay. All right, then. then uh, last minute of the match, who are you calling to come and save a? Pe- who are you coming to come and score a penalty with you, mom or dad? Mom. Right. <laughs> you say mom's got the techers, yeah? yeah, yeah. All right, and then this is the last question. It's three o'clock in the night. Obviously, you're 18, 19, 20, older than that, probably. Um, you get into trouble. Who are you calling? Come on. <laughs> what what type of trouble though? I don't know. Anything. What kind of trouble could you get into? Remember, you're a professional footballer. 
Yeah, dad. Dad, yeah. You definitely dad had to say dad that time. <laughs> At least I get one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Brilliant. All right, then. Nice cool. one, man. If we was to just get straight into it, then um, we're here to talk about UK on and your your life to date, you know, and your journey trying to become a professional footballer. So, you know, the best place to start is where did it start for you? Do you remember how old you was when you first started kicking ball or when you first started taking an interest in football? Um, well, I first started football at four. Okay. I was just in a park with my brother and my brother's friend we were playing and then there was a man in the park. He scouted me for a local team called TFA. Okay, when you was four? Yeah, I was four. Oh my gosh. Oh. And I went along, I think it was the following week and there was a tournament and I played in it and then Arsenal that people was there and then they took my uh, I can't remember whose number it was but someone and then I think like a couple of weeks later I went down to the pre-academy so is this all still at the age of four or we moved on to we five moved on to, to five, five, five and five. okay and then yeah went along there for this all start this all went along from about five to nine Okay. But as I hit nine, I had to make a decision because I was at Chelsea as well. Oh. And when you get to nine, you have to make the choice you want to sign with. So for anybody that doesn't know, so you can actually play for both or training with both? Before the age of nine, yeah. Okay. Okay. And how did you then get to even start training with Chelsea? Do you remember? I can't, I can't even remember. Maybe that. dad can tell us. Um, how we... It was our lo- local... Um, grassroots team TFA so he was there for a while playing playing loads of matches training and then um, Chelsea Chelsea was there one day mm. and obviously they spoke to the um, to the, the coach, coach obviously and the coach obviously spoke spoke to me and then from there we went we was invited to go down there and we went down there okay and then we was just training Kept trading, kept going back, kept inviting us back, and just kept going back, kept going back. But in between, we was at Arsenal as well, doing the same thing. So I was just doing the same journey at Arsenal <clears throat> and Chelsea. And then obviously he was offered at Arsenal and Chelsea, and then obviously we had to make a decision okay. where he was going to go. All right. How did you come to that decision, or what kind of what kind of swayed your mind towards Arsenal more than Chelsea? Well, Arsenal because Arsenal was was local, so it only took us about fifteen to twenty minutes, and Chelsea was anything from an hour and a half to two hours, depending on traffic. So mm. that pays. It's, it's a it's a no brainer, really and yeah. truly. I'm guessing there probably wasn't at that stage much to choose between the two, and then that distance then just sort of certified it. Yeah, the distance was key. Yeah, the distance was definitely key. Okay, so you're playing for Arsenal and you have done, basically been training and now playing with them since the age of five, yeah? Cool, cool. And now that you're, how old are you? 17. 17. Have you have you seen much difference in yourself as a footballer growing up from that age to now what you are at 17? Um, yeah, probably like my maturity levels. Okay. Like when I was younger... Or like a kick about, but now it's actually serious. Okay, so you find it getting more serious the older you got, yeah. and uh, what do you say, more competitive? Yeah, more competitive. Uh, with um, like teammates, and uh, as in uh, more competitive with teammates and with um, you know the people that 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 you know are your team, but you know you're all trying to basically. You know, get to the next level with yeah. Arsenal. So I think the levels are going up, the uh, intensity of the training sessions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So were you doing, like, how often do you train and stuff? Uh, I train Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday game. Okay, okay. That's a lot. Yeah, that's 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 quite a lot. But and I, and I guess that, see, we're sitting there saying that that's a lot, but I guess that uh, in this day and age, when you want to, um, make it as a professional footballer you probably have to do that and then you probably still have to do 
extra. Extra, yeah. You understand? So what kind of extra stuff would you can you do? Like as in um running stuff, um ball work stuff, like how often and how um well I have a strength and conditioning coach. Okay. Really, he helped me a lot. Okay. With my fitness and like power. Okay. Speed. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So and you think that really um adds a lot to what or complements what you're doing with the club? Yeah, definitely, because I've seen him I've seen for myself that I've got faster, stronger. And also I forgot to add on Kevin Lisby, one of okay. my finishing coaches. Okay. He's helped a lot because okay. under fifteens I probably was at my best in front of goal. Okay. Started to get with him under sixteens, scored okay. twenty five goals. Okay. Congratulations. Okay. Kevin, yeah, well done. Ke- Kevin Lisby's an ex striker, in, c- in case everybody doesn't know. So I guess having people like that around you as well also serve as like mentor, having a mentor and you understand um, having somebody who's done it before. You understand? So um, how does that help you? Um, it's just, it feels nice to have people like that around me mm. that care and want me to go far. Okay. How did that situation come around with uh, with with Kevin Lisby and with Mark and stuff? Okay, um, yeah, Kevin Lisby, obviously, um, his missus and my missus are friends, so okay, that's how that's that a relationship along. there. Yeah, so it's a good relationship between them, and then obviously, as he plays striker, I uh, was just talking, talking. Then we said we can do a few sessions, so we done a few sessions and. It's just been happening ever since from then. Okay. So, okay, and you're you're playing as a striker, yeah? Yeah. Have you always been a striker from when you was younger or has that your position changed as you got older? Positions changed as I got older. I started off as a right winger and I went left wing, then number 10, Cam. Okay. And striker. And you're right-footed? Yeah, right-footed. What sort of made you change or was that your... Was you pushed into those sort of positions by what your coaches saw in you or was it sort of your decision that you wanted to end up being a striker? I think it was, yeah, my decision, definitely. Yeah, yeah my decision. Okay, okay. You know, one thing I did want to know is, did you ever, because you started training quite young with Chelsea and Arsenal, did you have to go through any, like, formal trials or anything? Well, yes and no. Okay. Because obviously I had to perform well, yeah, to keep getting called back to train. Yeah, okay. But then again, they didn't necessarily say it was a trial. All right, was and then invited. okay, and then when you got to nine, was it just a series of just training with them and matches and stuff that you was playing to get to that point where they sort of offered you, or did you have to do any sort of trial match at that point? Um, I think I was at under nines. That's when I had to make a decision. Yeah. I think I played a few games at Chelsea. I played okay. a few at Arsenal. All right. And then came down to decision time. Okay. <laughs> the reason I'm asking that as well is I've got a friend at the moment whose son, who's eight, is is going to have trials with QPR. So do you have any advice for anybody at that age that you would give going into their first trial? Um, express yourself. That's the key thing because... Once you're there, you got to show what you're about. Yeah. Also, don't feel pressured. Like, you're going to make... Even if you make a mistake, <laughs> it's, it's normal. It happens to everyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. So do you keep telling yourself that as well? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Daily, daily. Yeah. I'm sure your dad probably tells you that as well. <laughs> so, uh, have you got any um, pre-match rituals that you do to get ready or anything that you... To get ready for a match, what do you? I normally do? like listen to music. Okay. Anyone in particular to listen to now? Little baby. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's about it. Little baby. Little baby. Okay. Know who little baby is, you know. Don't <laughs> <laughs> no, no, worry. All, all, all the kids are into are into that. We have to do that for our Spotify playlist. <laughs> get all of their all, all of, of their songs. tunes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Little baby. Okay, that's cool. Um, so dad, so like, tell us like, so what's some of the like highlights of, you know, of your son, of your son's career so far? Um, 
under under thirteen um cup final where yeah. we won three one and we scored two goals. Yeah. The thirteen was cup one, final, yeah. 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 It, was, it was one one. And then obviously you got the second goal to make it two one. I think it was it was a it was like a volley from volley, yeah. from outside the box. Mm. Yeah. That was a that was a special moment. That yeah. was a it was a great moment. Yeah, yeah, you lose your mind, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It must be quite emotional, like watching him play. You know, um, the yeah, it just must be just very emotional. Like a lot of passion, a lot of emotion coming through. Yeah, definitely. Stuff. How do you how do you like cope well, with it or temper well, now? It? Yeah, I, I cope. I cope fine with it now. I'm just I'm si- I used to be a bit loud on the sideline, but now. Obviously, yeah. my son tells me he knows what he's doing. <laughs> you know, so I'm just silent on the sideline. I'm, I'm not like his mother. <laughs> <laughs> when he gets tackled, his mum shouting around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what you do as a parent, isn't it? And, and especially as a mum. So, Kayon, um, how do you balance football and education? As in, do you find it? easy or is it something that you find quite difficult find it kind of difficult because normally tuesday sessions are hard at okay running oh is it a so wednesday morning i'm tired <laughs> yeah. i wake up for a lesson what then, time is it that you got to get to lesson uh my lesson starts at 11 okay yeah that's not that early but it's though. normally the morning sessions that are hard but we okay. have two sessions in a day the oh. evening sessions fine it's just an early one. Okay, okay. so it leaves, you, it leaves yeah. you shattered by the end of the day. Yeah. Okay. Is that, but that's now, what was it like before? Oh, before when I was in school? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I found it quite easy because I was the type of person that would come and do my homework. I wouldn't leave it to the last day. All right, all right. I like to get things out of the way. Out of the sure. way. Yeah. Have you always been like that or did you just develop that way of working when you started playing football? just develop that way because obviously if you don't do your work can't go to places like day release okay that's what school would say so yeah 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 so they keep you yeah yeah make sure your grades are on point so that you can get to do what you want to do really yeah yeah. Yeah. dad you've been hard on him on on his school work and that (laughs) (laughs) you know at the end of the day he knows what he's got to do he gets it done obviously if he doesn't do the work or anything then he knows his football will be affected as like day release it wouldn't make him go or when it comes to tournaments and things like that, when you've got to be out of school. Yeah. At the end of the day, if you're not doing the work, what you're supposed to do, then you're going to miss out on these things. So it balances itself out and it works. It works fine still. So what is day release? If you could explain that to me and any of the people watching. So day release is like when you leave school a bit early to go to your club, train, yeah, do your gym, Education. We also do education there as well. Okay. So that's day release. Really and the know. school that you was going to, is that connected to the club or is it just, just independent, just, just a normal school? It's normal school, in the normal school. So what's that like then, like especially amongst your school friends that you get to leave early to go and kick ball? Yeah, it's a nice feeling. <laughs> walking past all the classes. And, the class. <laughs> and also what's it like just sort of being, is, are there many other boys in your year playing football at your level or are you one of the very few uh there's only one other he's a good footballer as well yeah that's about it do you still get to play for the school football team or you just now nah? i played i played for my school football team memories memories yeah, yeah. <laughs> top goal scorer or yeah. is he on the wing then i was like a creator you're yeah. creating number 10 <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> good 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 you want to ask anything there josh yeah no nah, just um not nothing about the school stuff. Um, just yeah, just how do you, how do you keep yourself motivated? Like, how do you? Is there anything that you, you know, how do you keep yourself going? And even when it gets hard, how do you keep yourself focused? I just think about all the rainy days, mm. uh, when all my friends are at home sleeping. Yeah, and I'm up early in the morning. That yeah. keeps me motivated. That keeps me motivated. Yeah. I don't really want to waste my time. Okay. That's a good way to look at, you know, because you can't get the time back. So if you don't put in the work, you know, you know, I'm uh, speaking about, you know, if we're talking at professional footballers, Ronaldo's one of my favorites because you see the work that he's put in to get to where he gets to. So as 
you know, we've got there, the grind is sold separately. It's, it's all well and good having talent, but you know that you have to put the work in. So it's good to hear that you've got that mindset that, you know, when you're up, other people are sleeping, so you're getting ahead mm-hmm. of, of your of your people. Do, do you do you take that into to training with you? In that's that type of mindset. Is that the way you train as well? Yeah. Every session I take is like trial basically. Mm. Every gym session, take it serious. Don't miss no reps because yeah. it will catch up on you. Yeah, yeah, actually. yeah. Yeah. That's good. I said that for my friend that I said he's got, his son's got the trial. I said he needs to go in and just be acting like every, this is the last time he's ever going to get to do this because you never know when it, when you can get told no and you have to keep going. Um, when you're progressing forward, so you said that to, I think tomorrow you're playing under 23s. Physically, would that be more demanding because you're playing in against like older players? And how how has the conditioning that you've talked about before, how has that helped to prepare you for these type of matches? Well, um, it's helped me a lot because before I would, I would say I wasn't as like, strong. Okay. Now I feel more powerful. And and for everybody watching, tell them how tall you are. I'm six foot one. <laughs> six foot one. Six and foot and one, growing. 17, yeah. <laughs> and growing. growing. But yeah, continue, you were saying. Yeah, I feel more powerful. So that when I'm training with the 23s, it feels that I don't need to show as much power. Like yeah. I can just use my ability more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And was, did it, was there anybody that helped you alongside Kevin or was he the sole purpose, sole person? Uh, Kanye was my first ever coach. He's a great, great person. You know Kanye? Yeah, Kanye. Ah, <laughs> all right. Okay, one of your guys. Yeah, 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 I know. I'm good friends with Kanye. Also, Errol. Okay. He does my massages. So like when I feel tired, I just phone him up and tell him, Errol, I need sorting out. Oh my <laughs> gosh, this guy's got everybody on tap. <laughs> and tell me about Kanye, because is, is he... What what did he do? What what part of the game did he help you with? I think my mindset. Yeah. Because before my left foot was, I would, it wasn't good at all. Yeah, yeah. He used to make me kick a ball from the six yard all the way back to the other goal line. Yeah. And repeat it, repeat it onto it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. So I'd say, yeah, that's one of the key things he's helped me with, my mindset. He, he don't let you up, does he? Right, don't let me up. Yeah. And do you think that's something that you needed at that time? Yeah, definitely. What about your the coaches at Arsenal? What do you what have you learned from them? <laughs> Not much then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've learned from a few coaches, yeah. Dan Machichi, I think, and Danny Buck. They both helped me progress as a player. Yeah. Because before I wasn't as agile. Like I couldn't move like how I wanted to move. That like was also because my body was still. I was about to say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they helped me. Like bef- now, I can twist and turn. Before I probably couldn't do that as much as I can now. Yeah. So you're understanding your body more now as you get older as well. Yeah, definitely. And so, what, what, like, how have you? How do you take? How do you take care of your body now, or how do you think about it? In terms of eating and um, sleeping and stuff like, what do you? Sleeping is very important. Eating is also very important. But uh, before training, I would go in the gym, do my front rolling and stretching, mm. keep my body ticking, make sure I'm not getting okay. any sore muscles. But in terms of nutrition and stuff, like obviously you're still very young. Most sixteen to seventeen year olds, they're drinking. Cans of Pepsi, cans of Coke, Trixies. Have you, from this, from growing, have you started to? Obviously, did you have to take those things out? Was it something that you know, as a kid, you know, everybody likes sweet things and nice things? Is it something that you've consciously thought about and actually taken out of your diet and limited? Yeah, I've definitely taken out a lot of stuff. For example, like fizzy drinks, as you can see now. <laughs> I drink more water as well. I make sure I drink two liters a day. Okay. Keep myself hydrated, and yeah, don't really eat sweets anymore as well. Okay. So, for how long? When did that sort of like kick in? As 
as in, okay, I'm I'm going to stop this now or I'm going to take less of this now. Under 15 is when I... Is when you kind of yeah. like sort of started sinking in. Yeah. Started leaving those things behind. What happened at under 15s? What, what gave you that mindset change? I think maturity. Yeah. Like I actually feel like I started to mature a lot from that age coming up to now. Okay. Yeah. Was it that... So when you was at 15 or before, did you, do you have that belief even then that you could make it as a professional footballer or did that start to grow more and more as you progress? Obviously it grows more and more because at under 16, I was offered a scholar. The next step is a pro. So I'm getting closer and closer to my goal. So you feel like you're progressing every day? Yeah. yeah. So like, dad, what's it been like for you? So from four or five years old, you've been, you know, and mum, taking them up and down, traveling the country. Um, what's that like for you? What kind of toll does it take on the family life and, um, you know, like the rest of the, the siblings and stuff like that? Well, it is, it is hard work, obviously. I like football. My son plays football, so mm-hmm. it's something that I enjoy at the same time still. It is a lot of hard work, but at the end of the day, to where if you want to get to where you need to get to, then... You're going to have to put that work in. Yeah, yeah. I suppose it's been good as well. It's a good for you bonding as well. Do you understand? Because like you said, you like football and he plays football. So I think... Uh, definitely. We probably spent a lot of time together. You know, watch games, go to games. I think going to games is very important because what I used to do with him is when we used to go watch games, like just for 10 minutes of the game, just watch a player that you like. Mm. So forget about the game. And just watch him for 10 minutes. Yeah. So we used to do a lot of that, which was, which was good. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, watch the way they move off the ball, on the ball, mm-hmm. and all of that. But, but only for 10 minutes, innit? Because you really <laughs> want to watch the game. Yeah, yeah, of course. I think it's a good... It's a good little it's a, exercise. Yeah, it's, a good, it's a good thing, definitely. Yeah. Who, who's your favourite player at the moment? Not just necessarily in the Premier League, but your favourite player. I would have to say Lewandowski. Lewandowski. Mm, Definitely. And who was your sort of, did you have any early like inspirations when you was growing up? Like um, Jermaine Defoe, uh, Thierry Henry. Okay. Okay. So all strikers then. Yeah. So you always wanted to be a striker then? <laughs> <laughs> Subconsciously, you you, yeah. You, you always did. Mm-hmm. What about yourself, dad? have to be Son. That's my favourite player. Son? Yeah, Son. right now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a Spurs fan That's, a big, that's yeah. a big Spurs fan. <laughs> Spurs fan. <laughs> Let me take a sip of my water. <laughs> Got Man United over here. Just oh, like, Man United, who's Man United? Yeah. No just, for, just, just, just for posterity. <laughs> oh, for posterity. Oh. Okay, 6-1. Six, six, yeah, that was, <laughs> okay. that was just a weekend gone, right? <laughs> yeah, we don't need to do that right now. <laughs> Yeah, no, anyway, I'm done with them. But <laughs> what's your sort of aspirations then, um, Kayon? Where do you want to get to in the game? I want to be one of the best players in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Wicked. And when he looked at me and he said that, you know, he's serious when he says mm-hmm. that. You can see it in his eyes. What are you gonna need to do to to get there? Keep believing in myself and working hard. Yeah. And with the support that you've got of your your parents, parents yeah. you've you've got a great chance of of getting there, man. Any teams? Oh, go on, Josh. You wanted to ask something? Yeah, go on. Do you know? I was gonna say, how important do you think that is? Obviously, the support of your parents, that you know, and just them being there, like being on the sideline, obviously taking you to games. How important is that? It's very important because some people don't have parents to take them to training. Mm-hmm. Like some people will be getting on the train from North London, having to go to South. No, no parental backing. So I think, like, I always like to stress that, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, it's important that us as parents, parents, we support our, our kids yeah. in it. So um, that's why I wanted you to say it for yourself, you know. Um, and obviously, we've got your dad here as well, you know, because, um, yeah, like, our boys, they need our support, you know what I mean? They need, our fa- they need family around them. They need them to support. So, again, if you... You're out there and your son, your nephew, your brother plays football, you know, try to get down there, try to support them because it's needed. That's what that's what 
will push them over to mm. the next level and to the next um to the next stage, you know. So yeah, I just think it's important that's that that uh that we see that and we highlight that. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. You need the support you need you do need the support. Definitely. Because it's very it's it's tough. It's mentally tough. You have um you have bad games, you have injuries, you know, have you had, ever had any a serious <clears throat> injury? I wouldn't say serious, but I've had injury. A little, you understand? Yeah. Me. So, and I think the people who will pick you up at those times are your family. Mm. You know what I mean? And that. So, you definitely got to be strong mentally. Mm. Like injuries when you're not playing. Yeah. When you're sitting down. You're watching other people play. You just want to get back and play. Obviously, you had an injury for about was it, was it three months? Your knee? Yeah, my knee. And obviously, every minute I want to play football, but you're not ready to go back. So. Mm. And the physio saying you're not ready, but he just wants to play in it. So it can be challenging and a bit difficult, but mentally, you just have to be a bit, you have to be strong mentally. So how did you get through that that period when you was out for three months? And how did you get through that? I kind of took my mind off football for a little bit. Yeah. Like I just focused on myself, getting myself back yeah. to football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I didn't really think too tough about or. I need to be back on the pitch like now. I was at the start, but I had to stop because it was affecting. It was affecting you. What? How? What do you do to switch off, or how do you switch off? What's the switch off time? Um, normally, I just do my rehab. Like, just focus on that because mm-hmm. that's gonna get me back into the game. Okay, but I mean, when you're if you're not playing football, or let's say after a match or something like that, how do you unwind, or what do you? Is there anything else that you like to do that kind of? Um, I normally go see my friends after okay. games yeah. if I have a good game. I have a bad game. <laughs> if, have a bad... if I have a bad game, I'll go home. <laughs> Vex, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get that. I get that. Are you sort of like your your biggest critic? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. You hard on yourself? Yeah, I'm hard on myself. Okay. Is he too hard on himself, Dad? Um, or he's or he's just recognizes that he could do better. Yeah, well obviously you've got the um replay analysis so obviously you can sit back watch the game obviously so do they do how often do they do that is it all the time or? Yeah, yeah so every every training session yeah you can watch obviously okay um every every game you can you can watch back so i think that's important as well because then you could identify and see things what you didn't do right yeah what you can do so it's good that you've got that to look back on. Because if you're just playing games and you had nothing to, to look back on, then mm-hmm. what do you know? But you could actually sit, analyse it, stop, pause, fast forward, bring yeah. it back. And is, that, is, is that on them to go and do it? Or do they have like a session that they do it together? No, you can do it at, at any time. You at can do it. You have your login details and then okay. you just log in, you go you can watch so you it can at home. You can watch it a hundred times for the day, how many oh, times you want. Oh, wicked! So I think that is a good thing still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that, so that's 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 yeah. really good to get out of there. So <laughs> replaying that, so you just do that in the comfort of your own home, yeah. internet, computer, and you can just watch yeah. the game on the big screen. Wicked, um, wicked. So do you do that all of? The, do you analyze all of your games? Yeah, all my games, are, even yeah. the ones where you think that you've played well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good. And then, as we know, knowledge is power, but it's the implementation which is the most important thing. So I'm guessing that when you watching these, you try to implement the changes the next time you play and stuff. I'm guessing, right? Yeah, definitely. Good, 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 good. Um, you don't ask anything else, Josh? Yeah. So, like, um, again, I always like to come back to the parents. What what kind of advice would you give to another parent who's their son's about to start on a journey? That chaos belongs. Um, I would just say you just have to be, just enjoy, enjoy it. just enjoy it, enjoy the enjoy the moment. Enjoy the moment. You know what I'm saying just enjoy it. Um, if he if if he doesn't have a, if your son doesn't have a good game, then you don't really you don't need to get on to them. You just got you know you could do better. You maybe could have done this better. Maybe do that. But at that sort of age in the young age, you just getting you just got to enjoy the game. Like no pressure, <laughs> just play the game. Like yeah. even if you're at a club, just play the game. Like you're in a, you're just in a park. Yeah, yeah. Just, on the road with your, with just your be friends. free and just just play the game. Okay, that's a, that's it's a good sound piece of advice there. 
You know what I mean, because I know there's a lot of uh, parents uh, who they got there looking at their little two year old or three year old and thinking, <laughs> how am I going to turn them into a player? So I think people just really want to know, like, just like, was there anything that you that you saw in him, or was it that you just kind of led him down that route and then he kind of took to it? Uh, well, he was, just, he was just having a kick about in the beginning. That's all it was—a bit of. Just um, a little bit of fun, and then next minute, obviously, got invited down to come and train at um, Hayland Arsenal. So, obviously, we went down there, was doing a bit of training. But obviously, he's just coming from grassroots. So, yeah. even when I was there, I could see that the level was the level was high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're not used to this level, but at the end of the day, with time and everything, I believe if we work hard, we can get there. Like anybody can get there. Yeah, like you yeah. don't. To me, with football, you don't have to be the best. No. Like if you listen and take on instruction and yeah. do what the coaches want you to do, then you'll progress. Yes, yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot of boys who are talented. Yeah. And as we get older, they just fade off. Mm. Like it happens all the time, isn't it? So just be humble and just get on with what you need to do and just go about your. Go about your job silently and just do what you got to do. Do you think your passion for football will ever change? No, it will always be the same. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Always the same. Because you're going to need that. But I suppose actually you're what, 17 now, yeah? 17, yeah. I guess if you was going to fall off, you probably would have done already, wouldn't it? It's these yeah, sort of ages so. that you yeah. may have fallen off already. So yeah. in fact, then you seem really determined in what you're saying. Yeah. But I guess it's important to point out that... Um, the road, the road ahead is still long and hard. Yeah, definitely. I, don't... I think to get here, you've you've climbed mountains, kicked down doors, bust down obstacles just to get here. Do you understand? But this ain't even where the journey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? Just I think the journey's just beginning. Just beginning. Yeah, do you understand yeah. what I'm trying to say to you? So, just to get here mm-hmm. is is tough. You know what I mean? So, um. Going forward, you know, you just have to have that steel, you know, and that mindset that, okay, whatever comes at me, do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? Like, I'm going to be a professional, I'm going to make it. Do you understand? I think that's having that mindset. Go have the belief. Yeah. yeah. That mindset, as you're saying, belief. Yeah. You've got the belief then. And hunger. You're you're halfway there, in my eyes. If you believe, you can achieve whatever you want to achieve. Yeah, yeah. And hunger, I think... Where do you, where where does the hunger come from, or how do, where how do you or where, how do you build hunger? I don't know who I should be asking that from. You understand? Yet me. Where does the hunger come from? You know, where, where do you, how how can I, if I want to explain that to somebody else, you need to be hungry. You need to be at it. How can you, you know? I'll say hungry. I would define that as like always wanting to better yourself. I like never think you've done enough. Mm-hmm. I like always think there's a next stage. Yeah. There was, there's yeah. always a next, next stage. Next stage to achieve, isn't yeah. it? You know, yeah, because uh, yeah, I don't think that you, I think that you just have to have that in you, you know, I think, and and it's also also probably about the people that you surround yourself with and the information that you take in because there's so much negativity out there. Yeah. And if you're not, you know, if you're not taking in the right information, it can easily steer you off course. Mm-hmm. So I think that's very important as well. It's like when we're talking about being hungry is, is looking at the people that has progressed, looking at those yeah. hungry people and then just, just sort of taking on everything that you can get from them, all of the information. I think that will definitely help. Is there anyone particular that you would say that has motivated that, that you see that does motivate you? Um, that does, you know, give you a uh, hunger to grind. My mum, my dad, my sister, my nan. Wicked. Yeah. Okay. So it's just, I suppose, seeing what they've done and seeing what they're doing for you, you know, will, will push you to want to better yourself. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So the hunger's built within the family then, Dad? Yeah, we're hungry, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you as well, is there anything that, like, your parents told you that you still say to him? 
that you, you know, or anything, any mm. old piece of advice that you think? I, I think time, I think time, when I'm growing up, so now I think time is totally it's changed. It's different times. Total different ball game. Mm. Total different ball game. And parenting's changed as well. Parenting's changed, obviously. Yeah. Definitely, obviously, he's got both parents, so he has both parents pushing him. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. That helps a lot. Yeah, definitely helps a lot. Like, at the end of the day, it's been a, it's been a good journey for, for everybody. Obviously, as I said, I enjoy football. Yeah. He's took me all over the world. So we've, we've, we've been everywhere. I where wanted to ask football, that, actually. Yeah. Is where, where, what, what countries have you, have you played in? Where have you, what, what countries have you been to? Germany. France, Singapore, Singapore. Um, wow. Florida, Florida. Florida. So was that like a tournament? Tournaments there. We won that tournament actually in Singapore. In Singapore. Yeah. yeah. Wicked. How long ago was that? How old was you? Do you remember? Fifteen. Around about then. Sixteen. Around that. Wicked man, Singapore and all of that. Florida as well. I've been to Florida. That must have been nice. Yeah, it was nice. It's good when something that you love doing can, you know, bring you to... It opens so many doors, doesn't it? And uh, brings you so many different experiences. Like, would you say Singapore is the best place or you've been to or where's the most interesting place you've been to? Yeah, I'd say Singapore. Yeah, Singapore. <laughs> and then you, Dad, where's the most interesting place that football's taking you to with your son? Um... I say all of them, all the countries that I've been to. Yeah. yeah, man, all the countries. Obviously, you're watching your son play. You're playing against, could be Bayern Munich, um, Real Madrid, Barcelona. So it's a yeah. great experience. What's the standard life at those type of clubs compared to what you see here in the UK? Um, on the ball, I would say Barcelona, Real Madrid, them types of team. Yeah, different. Yeah, a lot better. Uh, they can they can play in a small space and still keep the ball. Yeah, yeah. And feel like they're playing on the level inside pitch. Okay. Yeah. And that's probably down to the coaching, you think, or the way that those teams are coached? Yeah, their philosophy, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, okay. What is it about um, football that you find difficult? Because obviously you're playing, you're playing football and it's all good, but there must be something that you must find difficult about it probably say what people say about it okay because people think it's just oh you wake up you just go play football come home mm. and they don't know half the stuff i have to do yeah 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 well, that's an interesting point because it's very football's a game of opinions and criticism everybody's got something to say like we can be sitting in a room watching man united versus whoever play and then everybody's going to turn around and say, oh, Harry Maguire is not all that, he's this, he's that, he's that. He's bare expletives. But either way, he's had to do a lot to get to where... You understand what I'm trying to say to you? It's easy for, for critics, us on the sideline, to come in and to be whatever. But I suppose when you're in it, you understand, sometimes you must think, what is this guy talking about? Or what are these people talking about? And that? How do you deal with that? Just block it out, really. Don't let it affect me. Yeah, yeah. What about any criticism? How do you, how do you take on criticism? Constructive, not I'm not just mean just the flat out nonsense, but constructive criticism from maybe your dad, mum, or your coaches. Well, before when I was younger, I never used to like it, <laughs> but now it's, I feel like the criticism from my mum, dad, coaches helped me a lot. Yeah, because they're watching me. When you're on the pitch, it's different. When yeah. someone's actually watching. They could see everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's normal, though. I think it's, it's normal for us as human beings to go on the defensive when you feel like you're being attacked. But then as you get older, you start to mature. And as you know, they only they only want what's best for you. So you can then start to take on that that criticism a lot a lot better. Um, what's, the, what's the best thing about playing for Arsenal and playing football at your age? Um... <laughs> Probably the opportunity that I have at the club. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't want to be anywhere else? No. <laughs> you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. I'm 
Yeah, you got a good opportunity, man. Definitely. You got it's your time to run with it now. You know what you gotta do. So, you know, good luck. Good luck to you. That's what Thank I thought. That's what I'll say, man. Like, seriously, good luck and wish you all the best. Um, I'm not sure if you've got anything else that you wanna wanna ask them. No, not really. Just um just yeah, good luck, you know. Um everybody here is proud of you. Uh we're supporting you, you know. Um Dad's doing an amazing job. Mum, you're doing an amazing job. Keep it up. Little sister, you're doing a great job as well. Best little sister. Keep it up. Um, yeah, I think that's it really. Just thank you for coming on, giving us the time. Uh, we really appreciate it once again. Wish you all the best. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and we'll look forward to speaking to you again and to get further information and updates from you on how and how you're getting on. Definitely going to be watching and, and tracking you and monitoring and seeing how you get on. But how's the season looking? Yes, it's looking good. Yeah, only four games in. But got, yeah. got off to a good start. Yeah, two wins, two losses. Okay, many goals. Two goals already. Two goals. Okay. okay. What sort of targets are you giving yourself? For this season, do you give yourself targets? I should yeah, probably yeah, I do. Are they private or? Nah, I can. I'll say. Yeah. Uh, 20, 20 goals. Twenty, 20 goals. Plus. Yeah, yeah. And is that being all competition sort of thing? Yeah, all competitions. So you don't play league. Do you not play league? Yeah, yeah league yeah. and FA Youth Cup. FA Youth Cup. Okay. Got Twenty league goals, people. Hopefully, you get it. I'm sure you will because you seem determined. Dad was going to be supporting you. Well, he can't really do much to help you really on the football field. <laughs> can't do much now. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but again, I suppose you've done a lot because I know that it's not going to be easy to, like I say, get into training at Arsenal, travelling around the country, watching the matches. Even, I suppose, even there's a, there's a heavy uh, burden and... A heavy, a heavy cost involved in just doing it and just getting all of these things um, done, you know, for him. Yeah, it was, yeah, well, in the in the earlier day, obviously now it's different, isn't it? But mm. before, yeah, it was a, it was a cost, a lot of driving. Well, I didn't even really do the driving. My missus done it. <laughs> 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 but yeah, there was a lot of driving, but it's, as I said, anything in life that you want, it's not gonna, it's not gonna just drop in front of you. You have, you have to, to invest. Up. You've got to put the work in, the time, invest. But at the end of the day, if he achieves what he wants to achieve, then we'll do everything possible that we can help him to get there, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. You know, that's the that's what you got. You just got to do what you got to do, innit, I suppose. Wicked, wicked. All right, well, again, thank you very much for coming on. This is Kayon, ladies and gents. Plays for Arsenal, age 17. He's got a bright future ahead of him. This is his dad. Thank you very much for coming on. I'm Semps. Josh, guys. And this is the Hard Work Project. Until the next episode, thank you very much for watching. Peace.